When asking the question, how do filmmakers use the technical aspects of colour to create emotion and mood in their work? The canon of filmmaker John Borman always comes to mind. Borman's use of colour is always striking on screen. Making his first colour feature, Point Blank, in 1967, Borman did not decide to play it safe. He stated, Point Blank was my first colour film, and I struggled to deal with the colour in a noir film that screamed out for black and white. I decided to shoot each scene highlighting a single colour, moving through the spectrum from greys and blues up to the final scenes in dark red. This unity gave power to the scenes. Too many colors drench the retina and dissipate the impact. Is that it? All right, good. Looking at the progression of color in Point Blank is almost like watching the raw emotions of the protagonist Walker, played by Lee Marvin, visually change before our eyes on screen. For example, there is one beautiful scene in particular when Walker meets Angie Dickinson's character Chris, and her bright colour, which represents a spark of light in Walker's dark existence, begins to rub off on him a little. In a masterful use of colour, we see the character's inward emotions displayed in the colour of his shirt, tie, jacket and clothes. They're waiting. Chris's presence has visually They're spreading the word now. They want subtly to warmed up Walker inside. Where is he? This is a truly powerful use of the technical aspects of colour in film. This helps to tell a deeper, subconscious story for the audience. Borman's masterful direction of colour carried on throughout his whole career. In the work that many considered to be Borman's best, the environmental-minded deliverance in 1971, he used colour to sting the subconscious mind of the audience. He chose an on-location riverbank for a rape scene in the film because of its acid greens. But for me, the problem was the location, where to shoot it. And I looked and looked and looked, and eventually I found this place which was Laurels, which had these acid green leaves so that the light coming through had that nasty kind of greenish hue. And once I found that, I knew really how to shoot it. This choice of using acidic greens for the backdrop of this harrowing scene is used in juxtaposition to the muted down greens previously seen by the audience in the film. This makes the scene stand out and prepares the audience for a change in mood and direction. Borman again is using colour as a key creative tool to incite feeling and draw emotions from an audience. The moment that the threat of the human beings is introduced into deliverance, there is a shift in colour, preparing us for something else. There is something that is coming to burn through our expectations of what we are seeing on screen. Borman and his wonderful writings has spoke at length about his collaboration with legendary DOP Jeffrey Unsworth of 2001 and Cabaret fame amongst many others, about his time working with him on 1974 Zardoz. Pastel colour, smoke and reflected light was used in Zardoz to soften the harshness of Eastman colour Kodak film. These techniques give the film a very unique look. Borman talks about Unsworth techniques. He used a fog filter in the camera, smoke to diffuse the light, and shot with the lens wide open. All devices to diffuse the colour and give an effect close to the late Turner paintings. A few films were made in this style between 1975 and 1979, but the studio was banned it. Zardoz is a visual feast to look at. As this technique was later banned by the studios, there are only a few examples of this technique that exist, making the film worth studying for its filmmaking techniques alone. The soft, dreamlike pastel colours used to represent the ruling class characters in the film are used in juxtaposition to the harshness of the 
subordinate lower class, and the dark reds of the killer's uniforms. These dark reds are an echo of the reds used in Borman's Excalibur and Point Blank. All three of these works end with some variation on the color red, showing a through line in color technique unique to Borman's work. Borman is using color as just one tool in his kit bag. Excalibur, made by Borman in 1981, is a breathtaking film to look at. Once again, Borman returned to earth tones as he had used in Deliverance and Point Blank, and used variations of greens to create a magical and mythical landscape for this Arthurian legend. <laughs> my father, my father is dead. <laughs> Look, here's your father. This time working with DOP Alex Thompson, Borman states, I told Alex I wanted a magical, luminous effect. He suggested projecting strong green light on the mosses and leaves to produce a luminous effect throughout the exterior wooded scenes. He was a tower of strength. In Excalibur, Borman is again using variations of one tone or color to paint with light. These variations are used to create feelings and mood in a way that I think only Borman can really do. As Borman states his own technique, he doesn't drench the retina and dissipate the impact of colour. He shows us variations and creates a colour palette that truly accentuates the visual mood of the work. In doing this, Bowman shows us the true control and power of colour when used for a driving purpose on screen. Looking at these works in comparison side by side, we see an evolving style that Bowman used as a technical tool throughout his work. He has a command of the cinematic language that is unique to his work. A language that one could see was developed from his upbringing in the beautiful surroundings of the rivers and forests he knew while growing up. I've always been a man of nature. I've always explored mountains and rivers and, uh, and forests, and I feel at, at home. And I feel that when we lose our connection to nature is when uh, we br breed neurosis because we're part of nature as human beings, we're, not, nothing, we're nothing separate. The earth tones Borman uses, blues, greens, browns, yellows and reds, are all part of the beautiful majesty of nature's colours. Borman shows us how to use colour in a way that an artist uses paint. Every stroke of light he uses and colour he chooses for a scene are there for a reason in these works. Borman understands the tools of the trade, and uses them to create long-lasting works of visual majesty and human emotion that filmmakers will be in awe of for a long time to come. Thanks for listening.